mine, 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 mine. Yes, this is mine. And I am doing an ode to the seagulls. <laughs> If you have, of course, seen the movie in which the little birds just get all excited and they just say, mine, 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 then you will know what the feeling behind this card is because I thought the seagulls were really cute from MFT and needed to just have a whole bunch of them in one picture. So I have stamped a whole bunch of them and there's a couple different ones facing different directions in the stamp set. And as you saw, not all of them had legs. Some of them are flying birds, so I drew my own legs in. But I only had to mask out like two, I think, of these little seagulls. I didn't have to mask out very much. And then since the sentiment talks about being as happy as a seagull with the chip, I figured one seagull really needed to be holding a chip in its mouth because, yeah, you gotta have a chip in the picture. So I just did that with a Copic Friendly marker that's and those are called multi-liner pens they come in different widths and then i just started using a couple of different grays to color the wings there's all different kinds of seagulls though and if you watch on instagram i might end up coloring this again with some other colorations of the seagulls because i thought it would be fun to try that so go check out my instagram if you haven't yet i'm sandy Olmach over there link in the doobly-doo here on youtube so I'm just gonna use a couple different grays to get a little gradation in my seagulls and then go back to my light gray to blend all that out and make it a little bit smoother. I always start with my lightest color and go toward the darkest and then the middle and then the light again to even it all out. I'm using a duller yellow, a YR, in order to color the beaks. And the reason is because I want that chip to stand out being really bright yellow. So I gave them some little darker colored beaks rather than my normal Y17, which is the best yellow. But I wanted to have enough difference between their beaks and that chip for it to show up. So I'm using a, another dark-ish color for their beak the YR27, and then I'll just use the same color again to blend out that dark on their little beaks. And there's my little chip. Color that in a Y11, but I'll add a little bit more color to it later on, probably. And this, I'm assuming, is a little pier that he's standing on. So I thought, well, he we needs more than just the pier standing there. So what am I gonna do? So I made a couple lines across this using a multi-liner pen again. So I'm pretending they're standing on a dock. So I'm just gonna color in the dock with that same W5 color and make it really simple. Now you could draw the bottom part of that pier on the left and make it a whole scene down the card, but I'm gonna do just the top section. And I'll do another little piece of pier here I could have drawn it with my pen, but this way I get to sort of fuss around with it with the color and then go around it with the pen. And that makes it a little easier sometimes and you're not having to make your marker fit within your pen lines. And then I'm drawing a little bit of wood texture using that pen, just scribbly lines to give it a little bit of interest to it. But the stamps are so simple, I didn't want to make anything hyper-realistic necessarily here. But I did want to focus on the water because I thought the water would be fun and could make them stand out from it because they're white birds on white paper. So giving them some color behind them is going to make a big difference. So I'm just going to grab a couple of blues and start working my way up the background. Because when you're coloring an ocean, as it gets further away from you, it's going to get lighter generally. Well, I shouldn't say always, because sometimes, depending on the lighting, it may not look like that, but nonetheless, it'll give that illusion of distance if it gets lighter as it goes off into the background. So this is the B97 and B95, just kind of blending them a little bit to give them a little, little blend in between. And then I started jumping to the B93. Now look how dull that B93 is compared to the other colors. It almost looks like it doesn't fit in that color family because it just doesn't have that intensity. And that's what you'll find with a number of Copic markers. You'll suddenly come across one and you're like, wow, that just is weird. And don't worry, it's not you. It's just the way things are. 
So I'm going to do a little something called glazing with that. It's something that I talked about a lot in the Copic Jumpstart class, because I'm gonna take a B21, which is much more saturated, because it has that two as the first number, so that's the saturation number. And I picked that deliberately because it is brighter, it's also lighter. And then I'm gonna go down over top of that B93 that was so dull, and it's gonna brighten that up a little bit. So glazing is going right over top of that color with another color in order to change it. If you're interested in taking that Copic Jumpstart class, it's in the link in the doobly-doo down below, as, there, as well as there will be a link at the end of the video on the screen. It's a great class for beginners or intermediates or advanced. A lot of different people have found that they've learned a lot about color theory. Even though they could color really well, they didn't understand what they were doing and it gives you a deeper understanding so you can use your markers in different ways. So I'm going to jump to a lighter blue, a B00, and just let this start to turn into the sky in the background because you know sometimes the sky almost comes down and meets the water and then starts looking like it's all one and like there's not really a horizon line. So I'm going to start adding just a few little marks, little swooshy flicks in order to make just the bottoms of some clouds and just sort of almost well i'm not really sure how to describe them just little barely curved u-shapes to do the bottom of the clouds but having a lot of fun lately with clouds i took a watercolor class in which the teacher was talking to us about the structure of clouds and I started to see them in totally different ways and had a lot of fun practicing and figuring out how to draw them in different ways. So now I'm just going to draw the top section so I have a little bit of color behind all of those birds but I still have that feeling of really light and bright clouds with just a little bit of that B triple zero that is uh, making up part of the cloud because clouds are not all just puffy puffy white and nothing else if you look at them carefully you will see there's much other color there but these i wanted to keep it light bright and happy and then the last thing is going to be to work on the birds themselves because now that i have an idea of what's in that background i wanted to add a little bit of dimension to the birds themselves so just a tiny bit i'm going to do a few strokes of c3 at the bottom and then run right over top of that with a little bit of C0 and that will soften that out and leave their heads nice and white but it dirties up their bodies a little bit if you've ever seen a seagull they are not the cleanest of birds so it'll kind of dirty them up a bit and give them a little bit of dimension and then the last thing I did was add mine 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 one of the stamps has the word mine, mine, mine in it. You could alternately cut that stamp apart and be able to stamp the mine, but I thought it worked to just write the mine, mine, mine all over the place. And there you go. My finished silly card. I hope you have enjoyed this. All I did was tie a little bit of twine around it after mounting it on a little bit of layers of paper and I think it was really fun. So here's some more videos. If you want to see more, you can click on my face to subscribe. And there's also that Copic Jumpstart class on the screen if you'd like to take that one. And I will see you guys later on. Have a really awesome day. Thanks much. Bye-bye.